Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, so today uh, I wanted to talk about um, one of the highest grossing movies of all time, actually the highest grossing movie of all time that I saw recently in the cinema, Avatar. And I've got to say, uh, when I was watching it, I was pretty breathless. Um, it, CGI is absolutely incredible. I was getting emotional throughout the movie. I thought it was so good. I thought, you know, the way they, the Navi were behaving and everything and that Zoe Saldana's eyes, her Avatar eyes are so big and you can really feel her emotion and everything. I mean, wow. But yeah, the whole, the whole movie's about um, this planet called Pandora and the Alpha Centauri system, some galaxy. So in a way, it's realistic because in the middle of the 22nd century when it's based, the Alpha Centauri system, you know, that, that could exist. You know, there could be, um, the Alpha Centauri system could be an actual thing. What, what exists, you know, I mean, it is, it is, it's an actual galaxy, many millions of light years away. And then they go to this planet Pandora, which is full of a lot of indig indigenous people, which are the, um, the Navi. And, um, basically they want to, they want to try and, they're trying to find this unobtainium. It's called, like, this mineral which costs, you know, it's, it's worth a lot of money and it's really valuable. So they're trying to get this um, unobtainium. But the thing is, it's underneath, um, home, home tree, which is a Navi's, you know, it's their home. This massive tree and so uh, yeah there becomes conflict because somehow they create avatars for because I'm um, I think Jake Sully who, who's in it you know Jake Sully the character his twin brother for some reason he, he gets killed or something and so basically what happens is um, he has to replace his twin brother and um, he ends up yeah he, he ends up becoming an avatar and so do a few other people like Signori, Signori Weaver and a few of the others they become like these avatar people and then they actually have to learn the ways of the Navi and then, and then he bonds with that um, Zoe Saldana. He bonds with her avatar. I don't know what she's called in in the film. And then yeah, it's, it gets really emotional. I was, I was actually feeling incredibly emotional through it. I thought you you're really. I never know in a movie where you're rooting so much for one side. I was rooting so much for the Navi to win. I wanted them to beat those humans who are using machine guns and like idiots. I, I didn't like those humans at all. Oh my god, they were annoying. I wanted the Navi to win so badly, man. I was rooting for them like crazy. I thought, please, I'm desperate for the Navi to win. Because it was like, it was really emotional. They were destroying their home tr home tree and then they, well, all the families had to leave and it was awful. And, and you felt a massive connection because right before they did do that, they, and that, um, that Jake, he bonded with, he bonded with the, um, you know, the, the queen or whatever she's called, that, that Zoe Saldana, who, her, her character, she, he, they were bonding together and it was like, you could really feel, you really felt the connection with them. And yeah, and it's like, oh my God. Yeah, so like I said, it's an amazing film. Oh my god, I was, like I said, I was getting emotional through it. I, I thought it was really, really wonderful. The Navi twin CGI is breathtaking. You know, how, you know that how, you know their eyes and their, and their skin is almost they're almost like humans. They're like ten feet tall or twelve feet tall. They're like double over double the height. But it's just and they have their own language and everything. And some of the tribes people speaking and everything, the indigenous sort of people speaking, almost made me think a little bit of um sort of like, you know, Punjabi and stuff, because it was almost like some sort of ritual they were doing, like some sort of... But yeah, it was, oh my god, I wanted them to win so badly. Oh my god, yeah, I really wanted them to win and just do really well. Like, I never thought I'd root for one side in a film ever. I was rooting for the Navi to win so badly. I didn't like those humans destroying all the land just because they can obtain some mineral. And they weren't listening. Like the Tree of Souls and how all the trees are connected and everything. They were just laughing them off and they, 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 they told them to get out of the way. They weren't understanding. The funny thing is, if some of those bad guys, the humans and everything, like the general, with this sort of, yeah, with the general and a few other people, if they'd actually, um, you know, become avatars themselves, they might have had some sympathy, but they had no sympathy, that's the thing, they just wanted to get that unobtainium from under the tree or something, and that's why they destroyed it, and then they just, and, and, and they, like I said, that Jake tried to make them move out of the way, but they didn't want to leave, and then he was creating video logs, like I'm doing now, creating video logs to explain it, but oh my god, it was such a good movie, and it includes one of my favourite all-time songs ever, I See You, which I'm going to do a cover of at some point, but yeah, it's just, wow, what a movie. And like I said, I would highly, highly recommend seeing it before it goes out, before the Avatar 2 comes out. But I was just, it was blown away. It's the highest grossing movie of all time. I didn't realise that. I thought, I knew, I knew it was up there, but it's actually the highest grossing movie of all time. Wow. And it's not hard to see. It's, what a movie. Like I said, you really feel, as soon as the CGI comes on and you see the Avatar, that's just so breathtaking. You think, wow. Wow, wow, wow. And it can... It can what, what, what makes them more realistic is that they're, they're, kind of, they're human basically, they're just a different skin colour. But the differences between them and humans are so subtle, like the size and the little patterns on their legs and the, and the long hair and the little connections at the end of their hair that butt mates and bonds with like the, little, the birds and everything when they kind of have to create a new connection, AWA, that's their, um, that's their sort of signal, they have to like kind of bond with AWA and uh, 
they can like view their ancestors history and stuff the tree of souls and they can bond with all the animals and stuff by put, putting the end of their hair to like connect, connect and like they're you know bonded for life or whatever uh, and that mated for life with with a woman that Zoe who Jake say does and like I said wow and, and it, it really felt because I said all this is set in the Alpha Centauri system which was a real galaxy system and it's set in the middle of the 22nd second second, second century second 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 century it's set in the middle of the 22nd century so all this taken into account you wouldn't think that um I mean you would think that this could be quite easily possible this this could be a reality you know in 100 200 years time whatever i don't know you know this 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 could happen we could like move across different planets colonize and try to obtain you know and discover indigenous sort of alien people and it's just fascinating the movie i would highly recommend seeing it i thought it was just such a good movie absolutely blown away by it i mean i saw it before i think i saw it in 2010 when i was actually in year i was in year 10 or if it was before september 2010 i was in year 9 in st john's morba theater on the hill Possibly just after we moved, we moved, just after we moved into the new school. But um, yeah, wow, what a movie! Like I said, I'd highly, highly recommend seeing it. It's just a breathtaking movie. The CGI will blow you away. I was getting emotional. I was almost like almost to tears. I was getting really emotional about the Navi because it's so realistic, and you're really rooting for them. You really feel sorry for them. You know the connection. They seem so gentle, and they just want to. And then suddenly, you know, bows and arrows against machine guns and all these trigger happy human beings. All the trigger happy, you know, in their sort of in their sort of um, aircraft and in the machine guns are just true trigger happy they just want to destroy everything and want, want to get the unobtainium and they want to um, they just don't care they want to move all these indigenous out of the way so they can get get it but Jake says he's trying to make them move peacefully they wouldn't move and they just it's just ridiculous how, how the humans have a so much lack of sympathy for the indigenous a bit like how, how we don't care about animals in abattoirs and stuff being killed for our gluttony but I'm just saying you know that's the thing and the funny thing is James Cameron's a vegan James Cameron, the movie who, who directed, he also directed The Game Changers. Um, or pro helped produce it, sorry. So he's actually a vegan. You can see why, you can see why, in a way, the whole film is like a, a silent vegan movie or like a, a second hand vegan movie, I, f I feel. The indigenous are almost becoming like the equivalent of, equivalent of animals, and like, you can have. And even when they actually end, ended up killing like a herbivorous animal in the film, Jake Slade does his ritual saying, God, your body is now taken to, you know, as if they care about the animals, as if they know that there's someone there and, and, and they're sorry they had to do it out of necessity. And like I said, that, and they say that all, all living creatures, you know, have their own sort of ability to, to see things, to see wonders. And the Tree of Soul is their like, link to their ancestry, so they're linked to that like, all living things can like kind of come together. And, and when they die, they go to the Tree of Souls or something, or they become one with Awa or something. So you can almost like feel like a silent vegan movie there. And also, uh, uh, Leona Lewis is vegan as well. She does, like I said, it's one of my favourite songs of all time. It appears at the credits, and I think it appears a bit slow at the credits, but it's one of my all-time favourite songs. Absolutely love it. I haven't done a cover of it yet. I might wait till I'm clean and shaving for that. But it's just absolutely one of my all-time favourite songs. I see you, I see me for your life. It's always something to do with cover now, but... It's such a great track, and I'm going to do a cover of it at some point. It's almost, I might even do a cover in a minute. I don't know, actually. I probably won't, but... Um, oh, it's just such a great song, and even that I feel like it's a vegan song. Like, I see, you know, I see, you know, the colours of love and of life evermore. You know, that's almost like a vegan song to me a little bit. And Leona Lewis is vegan. James Cameron's vegan. Yeah, wow, unbelievable. The only thing I'd say is um, uh, the only the only little thing I'd say is that I saw it in three D, and throughout the movie I didn't even have my three D glasses on. I was sitting sort of at the edge. I went to Sydney World. Being circus, and I was sitting kind of at one side. Um, so I always like sitting at the side when I'm in a film. I don't like sitting central. I like sitting at the court, at the side, looking at it, sort of sideways on. And I'd, I had my three glee glasses on, but they sort of—I don't want to say it bothered me, but it's still a little bit. Plus, if I was being more central, I could have done. But yeah, I, 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 the three D glasses—I didn't really bother me. So I, I, even though it was three D, and it was like you can sort of see that you know, you know, when the movie's sort of double paralleled because it's meant to be seen in three D. I, I just ended up taking my glasses off, so I saw it in the 3D, but I just didn't even wear the glasses. But it's fine, it was an absolutely incredible movie, and I'd highly recommend seeing it. I can't give it enough credit, I can see why it's the highest grossing movie of all time. Because like I said, you really bond with the characters. I was bonding with the Narvaez so so much, I was getting so emotional, I was almost on tears. I thought, wow, I'm getting emotional over CGI. <laughs> it's mental, isn't it? <laughs> I get, I'm, I'm all close to tears looking at CGI. That never happens, unless you're watching like a, a water, you know, um, unless you're watching a Watership Down or... Bambi or something, which is cartoon, but it's just so like I said, the CGI is breathtaking, and um, it's just an incredible movie. It's incredible! Wow, what a movie! 
You can see why it's the highest grossing movie of all time. I'm so glad Avengers Endgame didn't do it. I think Avengers Endgame did technically become the highest grossing movie of all time. But thankfully, Avatar got a re-release. I've never seen Avengers Endgame, but that's Marvel. And it hasn't got, you know, uh, nah, forget it. Forget it, what a fan. I'd rather King Kong get the highest grossing, to be honest. But, um, but no, this was an absolutely breathtaking movie. And I'd highly recommend seeing it. And, yeah, I can't believe it's taken 13 years for the second one to come out. But I think there's going to be, like, five sequels or something. But, yeah, um... I highly recommend seeing it because it's just one of the best movies ever. And you, you, you might get close to tears, you know, watching it, watching the Narvi, watching the rituals and watching the humans coming and not desperately wanting the humans to lose. I wanted the humans to get... I wanted those human beings to get hung, drawn and cored, brazen, bull, impaled, death by a thousand cuts. You know, I wanted them to get all of that old ancient torture method to those trigger-happy cunts. I wanted them to get all of... All of the, the anger that I was feeling and all the emotion that I wanted the Narvi to do well. So yeah, you might feel like doing the best how I thought. I thought, you bastards! Those human beings are tricky, happy pieces of... Oh, you know what? I was, I was sending so, so much sympathy for the Narvi. It was unbelievable. I was close to tears. I was like, oh my god, I want the Narvi to win. Those bastard humans, tricky, happy cunts. Oh, fucking hell, man. I was getting so wound... Not wound up, but emotional. It was such a good movie. I was so hooked on it. The acting was incredible. So, yeah, um, yeah, you might feel like that and you might feel, you know, this is why it's the highest grossing movie of all time. And like I said, in a way it's realistic because the R5 Centauri system, Pandora, is obviously a fictional planet, but the R5 Centauri system where it's meant to be is a real galaxy and it's set in the 22nd century. So in 100, 200 years time, we're going to colonize the galaxies and everything, go there and visit Pandora and see indigenous tribes, indigenous aliens and find this unobtainium sort of mineral that will be worth loads. I mean, I mean, so valuable. So it's actually realistic in this, in a sense. The funny thing is, my dad said he didn't want to see it. It's like full of all blue people and stuff. But the funny thing is, it, I don't know. But yeah, any, anyway, it's such a good movie. But um, yeah, I'd highly recommend seeing it. Yeah, wow, what a movie. I can't wait for Avatar 2, The Way of Water. That's why I'm wearing a blue top as well. You can probably see the top of it. So, so yeah. What a movie.